Hey everybody, how we doing today? Gorgeous day here in the Florida Keys. Looky, looky. Uh, we're actually right back to the same spot here on the uh, Cones Road uh, uh, boat launch. Uh, I was here yesterday. I'm back because once I got home, I did a little research on reason why those tarpon were where I saw them uh, as I was coming back. And the reason is back behind this foliage here, there's a big basin that fills up with water uh, during high tide and then at low tide it starts pumping that water out and that's kind of what was happening when I came in yesterday evening uh, where you have the king tides, so super high tides so that thing fills way up and then in the evening when I was coming by here it was starting to drain out, it was a lowering tide so that water was getting flushed out, all that bait and everything that was sitting in there gets pushed out and that's why those tarpon were kind of just sitting at these outlets here so you can kind of see there's a little creek beds all through there. Those go right back into that uh, big basin in there. So today I figured I'd get out here a little earlier where I have a little better sun. Um, I think it's around 2, 2.30 and then the high tide's around 3.30. So I've got a little bit of time before it reverses and starts pumping water out. And I think that's what will trigger those tarpon that might be inside to come outside or they might be outside and they'll come to these outlets uh, waiting to feed. So that's what I'm gonna test out today and check some new spots as well. All right, there's probably 30 of them I just ran over. Dang it. Yeah, there's probably 30 of them just kind of just hanging out in this pocket area. So they'll be back. Now I know for sure they're here. Nice. I was targeting this area here because it's got the, the full live mangroves versus these dead ones because they'll have a, an area that they could tuck underneath in that shade and hide out plus still go back in. But those that was such a huge group that was going through. So I think they're just cruising this shoreline and going inside. So I think we gotta be a little bit more sneaky around here because this has got lots of mangrove bushes here. All right, we made it around the tip of uh, Big Pine. So this is the uh, northern tip here, going out to the gulf that way. This is the split, so you can go on either side. But I'm just gonna do a quick check over here. It's super high tide, so the water goes so far back in there, that, so that's where all the fish can go. So it's doubtful that you'll see much on this edge. But I'm gonna take a look. It probably goes in 50, 100 foot back in there. Well, I found my mangrove spots. They're at the tips of the ends there. Bring some chum next time. Look down right at the tip of my kayak. Right there. Turn your head. He's checking me out. Slowly reaching for my fly rod. Slowly. Oh, I'm just a tree. I'm just a tree. Don't look at me. Oh, that spooked him. Dang it. Which way did he go? Golly. Oh, all right. So we took a run to the far end there gave it some time so the tide should be starting to drop that'll be sucking that water out of that bay that's inside there and then flushing stuff out here got good sun this section is kind of blocked off from the wind so i could see so uh now i'm going to take it nice and slow look for those guys and not get them right at the tip like i just did and then uh try to throw on them so that is the plan Okay, they're right over there. There's like three or four of them right in that little gap there. All right. Oh, no. Come on. No. Why? Come on. Stop. What the hell? Oh, there they go over there. God dang it, what the hell? Oh, fudge me, what the... F Son of a... God 
dang it, what the hell? Gotta look back. And they're gone. Oh, that was just perfect. Oh, no, no there's, there it is. Oh, right on them. Dang it, stinking stupid. That was just perfect. What the hell? Flicked it right on them. That's kind of why the fly is a better choice. Golly, what the heck? Just seriously. <sighs> if I could have done that earlier when they were still around. But they'll keep passing through here. I don't think they saw me. Golly. Freaking watch the backswing. Dang it. Right, there's one there. Oh shit. God dang it. Stepping on it. What the hell? Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. There he is. He's coming. Oh, I got on that muck. Oh, that spooked him out of there. It went through a bunch of muck. Dang it. And there they go. Oh, that spooked them. Yeah, that's... Oh, I could write a textbook now. What not to do. Golly, golly, golly. Now I'm ready for him though. Let go. But they'll be back. More will come. And we will be ready. I gotta figure out a better setup. I cut that off. Pure. So you can see why these tarpon are hanging around here full of pilchards here so hopefully they'll be following them in but anywhere there's that current these guys are filter feeders so they're just sucking in all that uh, vegetation that's pumping out and then those tarpon are just hanging around with them I went ahead and uh, put some 20 pound leader on the end of the fly line I had a uh, only about four foot left of my other line so it's about 30 or 40 pounds. So that's not good for this clear water. So I added some 20, couple feet of it. So that should help out. So let's see if that fixes my problems. Oh, there they are, there they are. Right there, there's two of them. Oh God. Oh, get them before they get into the trees there. He's there. Oh. oh, he followed it. Dang it. Oh, they were following it. Dang it. There's that big school of them. Jesus, what the hell? Oh, they're right here. I'm by, right behind them. I'll throw it right on top of them. Oh! They're there. right on top of him. Oh, he's coming back for it. Oh, oh, he missed it. 
No, dude, she's got it. She's got it. Oh, set that hook. <laughs> set that hook good. Oh, nice. No boat's coming. Stay out of them weeds. I'm not sure why this kayak keeps turning the wrong direction. This is nice. Oh, look at all of them. All those over there, all over there. This is probably that 20 or 30, uh, more, even more than that, that big old school that I first came in and saw them. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, this is a nice one. Ah, oh, I love it when a plan comes through. Just what I needed. Oh, oh, long throw there. Let's get out of there. Good jump, good jumps. All your friends left you. Come on, be done. Oh. Yeah, nice jumper. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, it's by that grass, by the bushes. He wants to go in there. No, no. Oh no. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, don't break, don't break the rod. Don't break the rod. Oh, oh, oh! That broke it. Yeah, too much pressure. Ah, oh, probably shouldn't have switched to that twenty pound. Dang it! But yay, <laughs> yay for me. Ah, oh, nice. And I think that school went back in there, so. Oh, I might not have another one of those schminnos. All right, time to regroup. So you can see how it just wore through and wore through. Just took too long and just cut me off there. Uh, I am out of the schminnos. Bomber. So I'm going to go with my other second standby. It's just a brown clouser that I run. Uh, this is my bonefish one, but I have really good luck with the tarpon as well. Um, it's a weighted eye, so it sinks, but there's some current here, so I'll just be sweeping it uh, mid-water column, maybe 6 to 10 inches below the surface, depending on the speed. But uh, still work, I think. Uh, here's a better view of kind of what I'm talking about. Um, you can see all this water is flooded through here, but probably 20 or 30 feet of mangroves. But on the other side of that, there's a big old open bay there. And that's what I saw when I was uh, Google Earthing when I got back yesterday. So that's why I figured out why those fish are in this area here. Uh, when the tide's up like that, they go inside there and they're feeding inside there and getting all that fresh meat that's floating in there. Then when the tide reverses and starts dropping, okay, then they get flushed out because it starts getting too thin. But so does all that loose food in there. It gets flushed out in these channels, that shark there. Uh, so they come out here in these outlets and wait for it. So my strategy for here, as long as it's a high tide and then an outgoing tide, I'm going to be finding fish out here. Uh, and incoming where it's going that way, probably not the best time because they're following that tide in there and they're going to be inside there. Like I hear them busting in there eating stuff and splashing. So I know there's fish, bigger fish inside there, but I would just have to wait longer and longer and then just kind of ambush them as they come out. Plus, they're going to stage up on these endpoints to catch those uh, food that's getting washed by. So that's the reason why those tarpon around here. And I have a new tarpon spot. This one right there. Oh, godly 
Golly, dang it. Where did he go? Stupid, stupid, stupid. There's one right there. What the heck? One right there. What the heck? The hell? It's right there. Freaking sh shoot. I can't see him anymore because of the glare. Stupid rat tip. God dang it. That's the third one. I think there's a couple going away there. Ah, another spot. All right, we're back all loaded up, ready to go. Um, today's video and yesterday's video actually is a, a, a good example of what I mean by the prospecting. Um, it's, yes, a little bit of just going to the launch initially so I can get that figured out so I'm very efficient at loading, unloading a kayak. But then it's a matter of going out and covering as much water as possible. And that really means is I can't really fish unless I see a fish or I see something I want to really throw. Other than that, I'm just in my mind marking all these different areas that look good to me. Then that was kind of like yesterday's video. Saw those tarpon in that one area there. It was like, man, it's just that same flat ground. There's just muck. There's, yes, there's some mangroves there, but other than that, I'm not sure why. But as soon as I got home, got on Google Earth, I could see that it was filtering water out of that big inside bay there. And they're just sitting there eating all that stuff that gets flushed out, or they're going up in there when it's high tide and feeding. So then, boom, that's why I knew. So uh, that's kind of what I'm doing is, uh, when I say I'm doing these prospecting, prospecting trips, I'm covering as much water as I can. I'm really not doing much fishing. I'm seeing spots. I just memorize those, get home, and I identify all those different spots, and I try to figure out are they truly and why they're a good spot. If I see fish, same thing. And then I could do a follow-up trip like today, and that just kind of reinforcements, yeah, what I thought is what is going on. And so now I know. Um, anytime from spring through the first cold snap, um, come out here with a uh, high or to mid and lowering tide. That means that water is flushing out of there. And then um, winds coming out of the south, southwest. So it's blowing over the big pine this direction and that side is sheltered. I'm going to be able to catch a tarpon, no problem. So I have that in my little book there and then boom, I go to another one. Uh, today I found mangrove spots. So I'll probably do a follow up, bring some chum out there, net some bait and then get on some uh, um, nice uh, mango snappers. And then I have that spot in my mind for whatever conditions. So that's kind of the reason what, I, what I'm talking about uh, in regards to prospecting, prospecting, prospecting. I got to cover as much water as possible from basically Big Pine, all the islands around it, everything in between there to Long Key is kind of what I'm focusing on. So that's what I'll be doing this last month and probably for the next two months. But uh, anyways, Good day, so uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video. Bye.